Harrison Graham and Chase Sr. here on NFL Daily by Chat Sports. And Chase, we've got some breaking Chiefs news in the last half hour or so. Yep. The Chiefs have signed a wide receiver, but I don't think it's a Tyree Kill replacement, but he's fast. Marquez Valdez Scantling comes down from Green Bay. He visited yesterday. They come to a deal today, and man, look at this contract. Three years, $30 million, MVS cashing in with the Kansas City Chiefs. Look, you move on from Tyreek Hill and you don't want to you didn't want to make him the highest paid wide receiver in the history of the NFL. So in doing so in signing Marquez Valdez Scantling, you're bringing in another vertical threat who can stretch the field vertically and open up a lot of things underneath for guys like Travis Kelsey. I like the player as like a third or fourth wide receiver. I don't love it on this contract and we have some more details that we'll get to pertaining to this contract, but for a guy all throughout his career who's had limited production. Yes, he can take the top off of the defense, but drops a lot of balls and the production hasn't been consistent. Three years, $30 million, that's a lot. It's not Tyree Kill money, and you can use that money and allocate it elsewhere to build out that roster, but that's a lot of dough. Look, it's an overpay. <laughs> I'll, just, uh, I'll just say it straight up. And uh, I know some of Chiefs Kingdom is upset with me because uh, I rip Brett Veach for the trade, but I'm just giving my opinion. I didn't like the Tyree Kill trade. I don't like this contract. Uh, doesn't mean he can't produce. Doesn't mean he won't improve in this offense. And this is a good offense for Marquez Valdez Scantling to be in. But Chase made a good point. Yeah, he's fast and he's a deep threat, but he's a number three at best based on what he's shown in his NFL career. And ideally, he's a number four. Now, if he's your number three, it doesn't necessarily mean your receiver uh, core is in a terribly bad spot. But at the same time, uh, let's just be clear about this. Uh, this is not a Tyree Kill replacement. I'm still doing a Tyree Kill replacements video that you guys uh, can check out tomorrow if you're watching live on Chat Sports. We'll break those candidates down here in a moment. I still think you need more firepower on this offense. Uh, but we'll see uh, how the Chiefs decide to use their money. So what is your one-word reaction to the Chiefs signing MVS? Don't mind the player. I don't love the contract. I'll say overpay is my one word. Let us know what you guys think down in the comments. Now, like Chase alluded to, more contract details. Matt Verderam, who is really tapped into the Chiefs, he's kind of the go-to guy now on uh, you know, reports, news, and stuff like that. Uh, essentially, if you break it down, it's two years and 18 million, third year is kind of a team option. So in that sense, it's a little bit better. Uh, but let me say this, Juju Smith-Schuster, who the Chiefs signed, I love the signing at a time because he was going to be your number two receiver, plus Marquez Valdez-Scantling does not equal Tyree Kill, okay? Let's make that very, very clear. This receiving core is not better than it was last year. It's worse and there's almost nothing you can do that makes it better. Now, that doesn't mean you still can't win. That doesn't mean you still uh, you know, can't use some of that money on defense, but I would make the argument that you gave Marquez Valdez-Scantling $10 million a year. You were offering Tyree Kill $21, $22 million per year. He, he wanted 30. You could have just given him the MVS extra money, paid it to Hill, and you still have Hill. Now, sure, you got a first-round pick and a few other selections in that Tyree trade, but... Uh, guys, 26 catches on 55 targets last year. He had like 400-something yards, three touchdowns. That's not a good conversion rate, less than 50%. He didn't get on the same page with Aaron Rodgers, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. I don't know. It's, it's you know, again, he's a decent number three, number four, but you look at this depth chart, those three guys, it's not a terrible core, but what stands out? You don't really have a true number one. Juju's a two. McCole Hardman, he's more of a three. MVS, more of a four. You lack a true number one. And now, listen, uh, when you have a championship type of roster, something's going to give. But, again, this team kept Frank Clark. We talked about this yesterday. Uh, they've now given money to MVS. They could have kept Tyree Kill if they wanted to, and that's really my biggest problem with this as we bring Chase Sr. back into this is they uh, people are acting like they didn't have a choice with Tyree Kill. They did. They just chose to go elsewhere. And maybe they'll be right in the long run, but I don't think they're right in the short run, and I'm not convinced they'll be right in the long, long run as well. Yeah, a couple of things. I think from a team philosophy standpoint, we're seeing a little bit of a shift, a little bit of a change here across the National Football League, kind of like what happened a few years ago with running backs, where teams didn't necessarily prioritize running backs, especially giving them second contracts. You draft them. You really run them into the ground for four years, then you let them go, then you replenish that talent via the NFL draft in a very cheap manner. I think we're seeing something like this with wide receivers, Harrison, because 
The Packers trade away Devontae Adams. The Chiefs trade away Tyreek Hill. Both of those players, two of the best at that position across the NFL, straight up game breakers. But right now in the NFL, what are we seeing? We're seeing Justin Jefferson come in in year one and have a historic season. We're watching Jamar Chase contribute for a team that made it to the Super Bowl in year one, and the NFL draft is now littered with very good wide receivers throughout the first two or three rounds. So the Packers and the Chiefs, they trade away their preeminent wide receivers and their number one options, but then they get back draft capital, and I think the hope and the expectation is that, okay, we don't have to pay Devontae Adams, Tyree Kill, $25 plus million per year. Instead, we'll draft a rookie. The production won't be the same, but we're paying them a fraction of that price between, let's say, 8 to $10 million, and then we can build that roster out elsewhere. I have more thoughts on that in a second, but first, perfect time for you guys to subscribe to the Chiefs Report. If you're watching on Chat Sports, links below, youtube.com slash Chiefs TV. When breaking Chiefs news happens, we'll keep you updated with everything that goes on. YouTube.com slash Chiefs TV. Go ahead and subscribe. I kind of alluded to this earlier. $10 million for Scantling. You could have just given that money to Tyreek Hill. He would have been happy, but... Uh, they didn't opt to do that. I want to kind of counter what Chase just said, and those are a lot of good points. Here's the one. I think Tyree Kill's kind of the exception here, and here's why. What he does for this Chiefs offense can't be replicated, not just from a production standpoint, but from a stylistic standpoint. I don't think even a Jamison Williams can come to this football team and give you similar type of stuff that Tyree Kill did. There's just no player like this in the NFL. I think the Chiefs tried it with McCall Hardman. Hartman's been a nice piece. He has not been close to what Tyree Kill does just from his do-it-all nature at unbelievable speed. He's got similar speed to Hill, but he doesn't do uh, and bring to the table what this team does. I just think when I think of how this team is constructed, I think this team is built to score 30-plus points per game, and they're going to outscore you. And they've done that very, very well with uh, average to above-average defense at times. Now, last year the defense fell off, and I think they're going to allocate some resources there. But – I'm just a little worried that they overdo that by letting Hill go and getting some pieces on defense potentially here, which they still haven't since the trade, by the way. The only move they've made is sign Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Now, there's been some rumors around Stephon Gilmore, James Bradbury. We'll see what happens there. We'll explore those on a future video probably. But the point I'm making is, is trading Tyreek Hill, it changes who you are as a football team a little bit. It, it just does. Like, the offense will look different this year. Marquez Valdez-Scantling is not a Tyreek Hill replacement. I think I've made that very, very clear. And now it's going to be interesting to see where the Chiefs go from here. Look, Brett Feature's done a lot of good things as this team's GM. I think, uh, you know, fans will and should give him the benefit of the doubt. I think we have to question some things. Uh, but let's see how he drafts. Let's see how the team looks the next couple of years. But I just look at this as... The AFC is getting stronger. I don't think the Chiefs have gotten stronger this offseason. I think they've gotten worse by trading the best weapon in football, and I think that makes things a little tricky at the end of the day. Now, here's an interesting note coming in from Jordan Schultz that they're inquiring about LaVisca Chenault. That'd be interesting. Uh, that would be interesting because coming out of college, he was a kind of uh, interesting uh, piece, wide receiver, running back, do-it-all type. Colorado. Uh, out of Colorado. Uh, I liked him a lot coming out. Did have some injury concerns. One head coach told Schultz, the kid's a baller. We loved him in the draft. Only a matter of time before he really pops. Uh, Schultz also added this, even after acquiring – uh, MBS, make no mistake, Chiefs are not done. Uh, replenishing wide receiver trade, free agency draft, yada, yada, yada. They like Sky Moore, Jahan Dotson, Traylon Burks, David Bell, Christian Watson, all have big fans inside the Kansas City building, which is why, by the way, if you're subscribed to the Chiefs Report, youtube.com uh, slash Chiefs TV, uh, you should subscribe because I'm still doing Tyree Kill replacements because yep. I don't think MVS uh, is that. So look again, to kind of wrap it all up, I think MVS can help. I think it's an overpay, but I don't think this team's done at receiver, and I don't think they should be, Chase. Yeah, no. I And look, the money that you don't allocate to Tyree Kill, you can allocate it elsewhere. And in Andy Reid's offense, he has the creativity to scheme guys wide open. And if you get a couple of vertical threats, that makes Juju Smith-Schuster and Travis Kelsey that much more dangerous. And if you go back to his time with the Philadelphia Eagles, there was one sole season in which Donovan McNabb had a bona fide number one wide receiver. That was with Terrell Owens back in 2003, 2004. So, you know, 
he's able and has shown that he doesn't necessarily need that bona fide number one threat. That's how good the offense is. And, oh, yeah, guess who he has playing quarterback? Yeah. Generational talent it's in Patrick true. Mahomes. It's true. I just wish uh, Hill, Kelsey, and Mahomes had another few years together. Yeah. But Best big three ever, right? Yeah, hey, I, uh, <laughs> th th with their time together, it no, was one no one matched their production. That's all I'm saying. Do the Chiefs still need a number one receiver? I think they do. Type Y for yes. Type in for no. Stay tuned and let us know in the comments.